Sing your hymn, those please, the 434, Revive Us Again. We all need that once in a while. Uh, some of pastor's messages, matter of fact, just about all of them, <clears throat> always reminded me of something that I need to get back in track with. <laughs> I hope the same is true for you because that way, that way the preaching of God's word is always a blessing to the heart. 434, we're going to sing verses uh, 1, 2, and 4. And... I'm going to let you stay seated. <laughs> we praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Thank you for that good singing. <clears throat> Fiery trials come upon you. And I think I got it mixed up with another verse. But anyway, <clears throat> the verse is telling us to be steadfast. It's telling us to work. It's telling us to Always be faithful in the Lord. And, and that's what we need today. And that's what uh, I see in you dear people that are here this afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> this song, <clears throat> uh, Sister Pat asked me a while back, what's your favorite song, Bill? Uh, sing it at your 80th birthday party. I think, uh, sis, I've thought about that and I think this is it. I think this one right here. <clears throat> Runs a real close second with the love of God. Mm -hmm. When we say Christ. <clears throat> The day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will see so small when we 
crazy Christ One glimpse of his dear face All sorrow will erase So bravely run the race Till we say Christ On the last two verses we get down to that course If you all just like to join in and sing it with me, I'd be very happy to have you do that, okay? Sometimes the sky looks dark with not a ray of light. We're tossed and driven on. No human help inside but there is one in heaven who knows our deepest care let Jesus solve your problem just go to him in prayer Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race. Life's day will soon be o'er All storms forever past We'll cross the great divide To glory safe at the last we share the joys of heaven a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished. We'll lay our burden down. It will be worth it all when we see. seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Thank you, Brother Bill and Charlotte. Um, I thought Brother Bill was picking on Charlotte when she was walking up here when he said, we're having a senior moment. (laughs) I thought, why would you say that? And then I realized what he was really talking about, so. (laughs) All right, take your Bibles, take your Bibles now and turn back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to finish up uh, this afternoon, and as you're turning there, I just wanted to remind you once again uh, of our upcoming revival on October the 21st through the 24th. We're going to have Evangelist Chris Chavez with us again, Chris and Sarah Chavez. 
Uh, we're looking forward to that. I know that some of you had the opportunity to hear him last time they were here. He did a tremendous job, uh, very, uh, very good young evangelist. And, uh, and so I hope that each and every one of you will be, uh, be back. Uh, the reason that I wanted to sing uh, our last song, Revive Us Again, is because I believe that uh, we, are, we are in need of that. Uh, not just us as a church, but as a, uh, as a community, uh, as a nation. Uh, this world is in need of revival. Uh, and I don't believe that it's too late for it to happen. I, I know that I know personally of individuals and pastors that you talk to them and they say, well, we're just basically trying to occupy uh, until the Lord comes uh, because they really don't feel as though revival is possible uh, from a prophetic standpoint. And I say, I do not believe that's true whatsoever the, uh, whatsoever the case. Uh, I believe that as long as we have God's word perfectly preserved uh, and inspired and individuals who will preach it and teach it and live by it, we can have revival. Um, and so I hope that each and every one of you, and, and again, we don't just have revival when we have three or four day meetings with an evangelist. What revival is, is basically, uh, it's supposed to be the norm in the, the life of a Christian in a church. Uh, when we are as close to God as we can possibly be individually on a daily basis, and when we as a church, uh, corporately uh, and individually, are seeking to win other people to a saving knowledge of Him and lifting up the Word of God, uh, and proclaiming the truth, that is, that is what revival is. Uh, that's what we look forward to. Uh, but I dare say, if we would just live by the Word of God on a daily basis uh, and not be so consumed with the cares of the world, we could have revival uh, 365 days a year. Uh, and as I mentioned last time we had a revival meeting, I, would, I think it would be awesome uh, if we could say that revival was actually breaking out here in Faith Baptist Church uh, and in this community before the evangelist even arrived. Uh, that would make his job a lot easier, uh, and that would help us tremendously as a church. So I hope that you'll begin praying about that even now. Uh, commit to being here. Uh, again, we're going to have some prayer meetings uh, for our revival meeting that's going to come up. Uh, I know last year we prayed for several days. One night I was very encouraged. We had close to 30 people uh, in here praying for our revival meetings that were upcoming. We want to do that again, and I'll give you more information uh, as that gets closer. But I hope that each and every one of you on a daily basis will commit to pray, first of all, for the evangelists, for the, uh, for the church, uh, and for our community, that we will be able to see revival take place even before he arrives uh, and commit to being here in those services. Uh, it's always a wonderful thing when God's people uh, can... I, I guarantee you that if you come to revival on a Tuesday night, you're not going to leave here saying, boy, I regret the time that I spent there. Uh, most often, individuals that don't come to every service hear about the wonder of the service and say, boy, I regret that I wasn't there. And so don't be one of those individuals. Just commit to being in our revival services on October the 21st through the 24th. We're going to have, a, again, another special dinner uh, when he gets here for that Sunday. And we're going to have something special each night after the service and also during the service uh, in terms of outreach to get more individuals here. Uh, we'll give you more information about that as it gets closer. Uh, but just be praying that the Lord will do a work even before. We don't have to wait for October 21st. Uh, through the 24th to see revival. And so just be praying and have it start in your own life. Don't be worried about the individual next to you. Don't be worried about uh, the individuals, uh, the rest of the church. Just make sure that you are doing what you are supposed to do. This is what I tell my kids all the time. Don't worry about what this person is doing. Don't worry about what that person is doing. Make sure that you are doing what is right and ask the Lord to begin a revival in your life and then we'll see it spread throughout the church. And so, uh, wouldn't it be neat if we did see a, a, a revival take place here of, of, epic, of epic proportion, uh, and each and every one of us could say, hey, you know what, it's because I spent the time that I needed getting myself right with God. Glory be to Him for what He has done. So that's upcoming. Be in prayer for that. Uh, also, there was uh, one other thing that I was going to mention, uh, but I guess I'm having a senior moment now. And so... <laughs> So what goes around comes around, I guess. Um, oh, that's frustrating. Somebody read my mind and tell me what I was going to say. What that? No, that's in your bulletin. All right, anyway. Uh, well, obviously the Lord didn't want me to say it. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. And so, all right. Matthew chapter 6, if I remember it all. 
and I don't get too far into the message, I'll mention it. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it gets worse. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to try to forget it completely. All right, Matthew chapter number 6. Uh, we're going to look at verse uh, number 32. Uh, and this is, a, again, a passage of Scripture that I believe each and every one of us needs uh, reminded of on a, on a regular basis. Uh, there are things that, that come into my life uh, quite often that make me worry. Uh, that make me anxious, that, that make me stress out about things. And again, whether it's uh, financial, uh, whether it is a family situation, whether it's a health situation, whatever the case might be, we all have times when we worry. We all have times when we, uh, maybe not, we would not call it worry, but we stress about different situations. Or we're fearful uh, about certain things, the unknown. And the Bible makes it clear from what we saw earlier this morning uh, that we shouldn't be living our lives that way. Uh, we shouldn't be anxious. And Christ here specifically tells uh, His people, His followers, uh, that they should not worry, uh, that they should not be anxious. And we mentioned, first of all, this morning, I'm just going to go over these very quickly, uh, the seven reasons. The first four is because, number one, we are better than the birds. We talked a little bit about, uh, about that, the fact that God provides everything they need, and he, he loves us and cares for us even more than that. Uh, so he'll provide our every need. Uh, anxious, uh, our anxiety gets you nowhere. We saw that from verse number 27. Uh, actually, it has detrimental effects upon an individual's life. Uh, verses 28 through 30, we learn that God is glorified through adornment. He's glorified through being able to provide for each and every one of us. Uh, and also verse number 32, we learn and illustrated uh, that when we worry, when we have anxiety in our lives, we are behaving worse than the pagan. And I think it's important to understand those things uh, as we continue uh, this afternoon. Uh, number five, uh, write this down with me if you would. Uh, hold your amens for when I get a little bit farther into the service. Uh, thank you, Chloe. Uh, verse, number, verse number 32, she just, just hollers whenever she wants. So uh, allow that to keep us awake, if it, if it will. Uh, verse 32, let's look at that very quickly. Uh, the Bible says, for all these things do the Gentiles seek. And that's what we uh, uh, gathered the information from. Worrying uh, and having anxiety in their lives is actually behaving worse than the pagan. That's what the world does. The world worries about things. The world gets upset about things. Individuals that are not saved and individuals that don't have Christ in their life. They're the ones that should be anxious about certain things. Uh, but we need not do that. And look what he says. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. You see, this verse is very encouraging to me, but because it tells me, write this down, number five, the Father knows your needs. The Father knows your needs. Your Creator, the one that placed you on this earth and mapped out your life according to His specific plan and purpose, knows everything that you need throughout the course of this life. Uh, with me and my kids, it's, it's nice that my children are in here. Uh, and one of the things that I often notice about my kids is they, uh, they don't know this, but I know the needs that my children have. I know that my children need to be fed on a daily basis. I know that my children need to have clothes on their back on a daily basis. I know that my children need uh, a warm, safe place to sleep on a daily basis. I know the needs that my children have. All right? Uh, it, it never happens. Callie never wakes up in the morning and comes into my room and says, Hey, Daddy, I'm, I'm worried about uh, what I'm going to have for breakfast. She just knows that I know beforehand what she needs, and she knows that when she's ready for breakfast, it is going to be provided. And so we should have that same outlook uh, when it comes to the things that we need on a daily basis. The Father knows the things that we need. And there they go. I use them in one illustration. They get mad and they decide to leave. So uh, we see how grateful they are. All right. But the Father knows the needs that we have. Just as our children know, we know as parents, we know the things that they need. Those will be provided to them. God is the very same way. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5. I believe a perfect parallel uh, to what Christ is saying here. 
First Peter chapter number five and look down at verse number seven. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, this is a passage of scripture that we all know rather well. We we probably, each and every one of us, probably have this particular verse even memorized. Uh, and we look at that verse and we say, okay, it's, it's important for us to cast all our care upon Him. And that's what we should do. Uh, because the Father knows the needs that we have. The Father knows uh, what's coming up this month in terms of bills for me. He knows what's coming up this month in terms of health for you. He knows what your family is going through. He knows all of these things. And by the way, it's important. That's what prayer is. Prayer is you simply letting God know, hey, I'm casting my dependence upon you. That's what my children have done with me. They're in my house. They trust me to provide uh, the things that they need on a daily basis. And that's what we are doing to God. When we are praying, we're simply saying, God, I am, I am depending on you to provide for me the things that you know I have need of. And I dare say this, God even knows the things that we have need of before we ever know that we have need of those things. If you're in a financial situation and you've just now come to understand this, understand that God knew that before the foundations of this world. And He already has a plan to help you to meet the needs that you might have. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him. Why? For He careth for you. Now, that verse, sometimes we, uh, we read it the wrong way. When the Bible says that we're supposed to cast all our care upon Him because He cares for us, that makes us think, first of all, okay, you know, I'm to cast all my care upon Him because He loves me and He cares for me. That's one way that we can, we can view that verse, and that is truth. But the way that this is written, it actually means cast all your care upon Him and allow Him to be the one who does the caring for you. Let God worry about the needs that you have in your life. He knows the things that you're in need of on a daily basis. Cast all your care upon Him. Say, Lord, here's my burdens. Here's my needs. Here's the things that you know I have to have. And I am simply casting them upon you. My, I'm giving, uh, placing all of my dependence upon you and allow Him to be the one that worries about it for you. He's going to show Himself to be God every time. If you are serving Him, if you are living a life that is well-pleasing to Him, the Bible makes it perfectly clear that He will provide every need because He is God. And He cannot deny Himself. For God to say that I will supply all of your need and then not supply all of your need would make Him less than God. We understand that that's never going to happen. Number five, we understand... We should not worry because the Father knows our needs. Cast all your care upon Him and allow Him to worry about the situation for you. Number six, look at verse number 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Oh, here we go. And all these things shall be added unto you. Up to this point, it's been easy for us to look at this passage of Scripture and say, hey, you know what? I don't need to worry because God's just going to meet every need that I have. He's going to take care of everything. He's got everything under control. But at the same time, folks, understand this. And we're going to see this in just a moment in the book of Philippians that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. We have a responsibility as well. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. In the midst of this glorious passage on on not worrying or being anxious, He gives us a command. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go all the way back up to verse number 25. The Bible says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. And then down in verse number 33, He says, but seek ye first... The kingdom of God. Write this down. Number six. God will provide if you seek His honor. God will provide if you seek His honor. We understand uh, from looking at Philippians chapter number four and verse 19. Turn there very quickly with me if you would. Philippians chapter number four. And we're going to get into the exposition of the book of Philippians next week. Lord willing, and I just remembered what I was going to say before the service, Uh, so Lord willing, I'll remember what it was and I'll mention it after the service, but I'm sure I'll forget it by then. Philippians 4, 
and verse 19, the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory. And we've mentioned this before, and this is one of the often uh, most misquoted verses in all of Scripture. We look at this verse and we say, God is going to meet all of your needs. But we need to understand the context leading up to verse number 19. You see, the Apostle Paul uh, had made it perfectly clear that this church at Philippi was living in a way that was pleasing to God. They were providing uh, the needs that the Apostle Paul had, even though no other church would provide to the need of the Apostle Paul. And he says, because you have been giving, because you have been seeking to further the kingdom, because you have been honoring God with your life, He is going to to uh, provide all of your needs according to His riches in glory. Number six, God will provide if you seek His honor. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Everything that you need in life, God will provide if we are willing to seek His honor and His glory and live according to His word. Folks, He is not going to let you go without. And if He does let you go without, understand it's very possibly one of two reasons. Because we're not living for Him in the way that we're supposed to, or else He wants to get us in a position like we mentioned this morning. He wants to be glorified through providing for you and adorning you just like He did King Solomon that we saw in the, in the verses previous. Understand, God will provide if we seek His honor. Understand, just a moment ago we, we read up in verse number 25, Take no thought for your life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Again, as we said in the earlier service, that's what life is. That's laying hold on eternal life, as Paul told Timothy in the book of of, uh, 1 Timothy. Lay hold on eternal life. Make nothing more important in your life than you knowing God and growing close to Him and living for Him and serving Him according to His Word on a daily basis. God will provide. He'll give you everything that you need. Oftentimes we think that He doesn't provide because He doesn't always give us the things that we want. You see, oftentimes we as uh, individuals uh, in our modernistic uh, modernistic society, we want to feel as though we're uh, living in the lap of luxury. We want more than God really knows that we need. And sometimes that's why we think to ourselves, well, God's just not providing at my every need because I don't have everything that my heart desires. But I dare say that if we live according to this verse, and seek ye first the kingdom of God, He is going to change your desires, and everything that you have, you will be satisfied fully and completely content in that because of the relationship that you have with Him. Finally, number six. Up to this point, we are better than the birds. Anxiety gets you nowhere. God is glorified through adornment. Worry is behaving worse than the pagan. The Father knows your need. God will provide if you seek His honor. And verse number 34, write this down. Tomorrow is not today. Tomorrow is not today. Look at the Bible. Look at what the verse says in uh, verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil of Thereof. In other words, what Christ is saying here is pray and understand that we are to take care of the things today. Honor Him today. Uh, write this down. There's a saying that I heard growing up, and it's something that has stuck with me uh, up to this, at this very moment in my life. Uh, today is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. Have you ever heard that? Today, right now, is the tomorrow that you worried about yesterday. What does all this mean? Don't worry about tomorrow. And when the Bible says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof, that basically is saying uh, that we as, as, as God's people, we want to know uh, and we want to have this security blanket laid out in front of us. We want this padded bank account so that we can know what's going to happen tomorrow. We want to know what's facing us health-wise so that we can plan and prepare for tomorrow. It's easy to plan and prepare when we have a big big bank account. It's easy to plan and prepare for the future when we know that our health is okay. It's easy to plan and prepare when our family situations are in order and exactly how we want them to be. But it's hard to plan and prepare and go forward by simply trusting in God. 
And that's what he's saying here in this passage of Scripture. Quit worrying about tomorrow. We need to plan and we need to prepare and be good stewards of what God has given us. But at the same time, we need not worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow is the today that we worried about yesterday. Stop and think about that for just a moment. You know, sometimes when I worry and when I stress and when I get afraid and all of these things, it's not because of the things that I'm dealing with at that particular moment in time. What are we dealing with? We're dealing about things that are take, we're worried about taking place in the future. He says, don't worry about those things. Because why? God is already there. He's got a plan and a purpose mapped out for your life. And He's just waiting for you to trust Him day in and day out. Simply trust Him and understand that tomorrow will provide for itself. I hope that the things that we've gone over this afternoon and this morning have been an encouragement to you. You know, each and every one of us, like I mentioned before, I have things in my life that cause me distress. Uh, Young people have things in their lives that cause them distress. Uh, uh, Elderly people have things in their lives that cause them worry and anxiety. All of these things. Missionaries today have great reason uh, to be to be worried. Uh, We received a a missionary letter just recently and learned that there are several churches. Please understand this: we're not the only church who's going through financial hardship right now. Okay, please understand that. Uh, up to this point, and Lord willing, in the future, we're not going to have to who cut the support of any of our uh, missionaries who are serving and planning churches uh, in, in foreign fields. Uh, but there are churches around the area and around the country that have had to do that because of their financial situation. And we understand uh, that there are missionaries who have, who have reason to be anxious about things. They're, they've decided to go and serve the Lord in Africa, and all of a sudden they get a letter from a supporting church that says, oh, we're sorry, we're going to have to cut your support due to lack of funds. Everyone has reason to worry. Everyone has reason to be anxious. But at the same time, as we mentioned this morning, we have the most powerful being that this world has ever known living inside of us. Preparing us, guiding us, delivering us, providing for us on a daily basis. We have no reason to worry. We have no reason to stress. We have no reason to be anxious for the things that are beyond our control. We're better than the birds. Anxiety gets you nowhere. God is glorified through providing. God is glorified through adornment. Worry is, providing, is behaving worse than the pagan. The Father knows your every need. God will provide if you seek His honor, and tomorrow is not today. Simply trust Him, obey Him, go in the direction that He would have you to go. We have no reason to worry. We have no reason to fear. I hope that God will use this message that we've seen this morning and this afternoon in a great and mighty way in each and every one of our hearts and lives to live, to serve, and trust Him fully and completely. You will be able to serve Him more fully and completely if you aren't worrying about the things that are going on. Simply trust Him. Go in the direction that He wants you to go. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Honor Him with your life and then just rest in His promise. A promise that God Himself made. I'll provide unto you everything that you will ever need. And just rest in that promise and live according to His word. Let's pray together, may we? Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for loving us. Father, we thank you again for this passage of Scripture that we've seen. We thank you for the time that we've had today to gather around your word and to be in time of fellowship with you. And Father, I pray that you would use the words that have been spoken today to encourage the hearts of your people. And Father, no doubt each and every one of us get worried. Uh, We become anxious. We stress about situations. We become fearful. But Father, I pray that you would help us to understand that you are in complete control. Father, help us to seek you. Help us to serve you. Help us to do the very best that we can for your honor and for your glory. And then to rest in your promise that you will provide according to your riches and glory. Again, we love you. We thank you for who you are and for what you'll do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.